just out for a Sunday afternoon drive, and I'm rather surprised that this little bridge in western Pawnee County, not far east of Mor uh, wet, uh, yeah, east of Morrison, is still here. It's a little three-panel half-hip pony truss built by the Canton Bridge Company, uh, Canton, Ohio. They built a lot of bridges in Oklahoma. Stark County crossed many creeks for the Sooner State. And um, this bridge has changed a little bit in the 23 some years since I first saw it. The um, it used to have a concrete deck on it, and now it's all wood. It doesn't look relatively old either. And only one of the um, cover plates on the hip is still in place. This is the hip right here, and you can see where the cover plate would have been, like what's on the other side. With the builder's information. And you can see the uh, lower cord has had some assistance here in the end panels where there are no eye bars actually. You see the middle panel of the lower cord consists of a pair of eye bars and the end panels consist of two channels with uh, batten plates. Let's see if the other side has this too. Yep, they've done a little bit of assistance here also. Also interesting on this side of the bridge, the uh, diagonal eye bars here have been given some assistance with a turnbuckle and a, some rods. And in the middle panel, the counter ties have been replaced, or at least had some repair work done to those. Those don't look to be the original counter ties. Or at least the, the turnbuckles are not original. This part looks like it's possibly original, and it's had these um, hoops uh, welded on, and then these turnbuckles installed. West side of the bridge here has the original turnbuckles. This is a one inch square rod that's been upset here on the end and threaded. And then this is the uh, turnbuckle. So we've got left and right threads here on each end so that this can be turned and these can be snugged up. Something that's kind of interesting about this bridge, it's hard to see from here, we'll go to the other end and look, is the nice stone abutments that it stands on, nice cut stone abutments. And there we go, nice handcrafted, probably hand cut and hand laid stone. Just the little creek that it crosses. I'll put a link to the page for this bridge on my bridge page in the description of this video, but rather nice, rather pleasant little surprise on a Sunday afternoon drive to discover this still here. Some Markings here, L2U1, East Truss, from somebody that's worked on or inspected the bridge. As you can see it's still in service with a three ton limit. This bridge probably only would have been designed to carry ten tons. Anyway, it's Oklahoma Bridges. Gonna get out of this guy's way, so thanks for watching. 
okay the truck actually turned you can hear the cows in the background he's actually feeding cows uh, I just wanted to make a little addendum here before I end the video to sh uh, share with you why this is called a half hip pony truss because you will often see these three panel pony trusses and they come in two flavors either the half hip or the full slope versions and the full slope versions are usually called queen post truss and the half hip refers to this little arrangement here where the end post is nearly vertical relative to the length of the panel and then you've got a long diagonal here it's almost like the end panel of a warren truss on a full hip truss which would be a queen post the end post starts down there at the pin at the bottom and runs up to this first panel joint right here to this pin um, so by doing this I'm not exactly sure what the uh, advantage to this was but said so this was very popular uh, you tend to see these in either three or four panel lengths these half hip pony trusses and of course the center panel here is the same as it would be as if this was a queen post or full hip design. Probably something about combining some of the advantages of the Warren truss design with the advantages of the Pratt design. Like I said, the, the, half, the half hip panel here, it's sort of a very, when you look at the panel by itself, it's very asymmetrical. Because the upper cord is about two-thirds to three-quarters of the length of the panel. And then the end post takes up the rest of that. Then you have the um, main diagonal here that's in tension that comes from that um, pin going down to that pin. And of course, because this is not a full panel, like on a full slope bridge where the end post would come all the way up, and then that would be in tension... There is no um, hip vertical there for a floor beam because that, you know, that would be here if this was a full slope bridge. There's any experts that would like to debate the relative merits of the half hip or the full slope design? Perhaps I can think of one just off the top of my head here looking at this bridge. So if this were a full slope bridge, the end post would be very long, and that's a compression member. And by splitting it up like this, you shorten its length, and then you have something there to brace it in the middle. Because the forces on this bridge is causing that joint there to want to kick out. And so this diagonal here is tying it down there, and, you know, it's required to support the bridge anyway so possibly just another way of bracing the end post without adding a non-active strut some bridges will have a strut called a Collinson strut you often see them on railroad bridges where the end post from here to here will have a small strut coming up that intersects it somewhere near its midpoint to help brace it to keep it from buckling. That's the problem you have to deal with with compression members is the possibility that they might buckle. So by, sh by doing this the length of these two parts is greatly reduced from what it would be if this was the end post. Anyway, that's my theory on it. As always, this is Oklahoma Bridges and Thanks for watching.